Red. Rose. And welcome everybody to a special episode of the Animaniacast. Did you miss us? I hardly even know you. We're, We're the Warner, Warner Brothers. Brothers. And the Warner Sister. <laughs> what do you want? We asked you first. Well, I want... No, you didn't. Well, we meant to. Do you know who I am? Dr. Otto Scratch and Sniff, world-famous psychoanalyst to the stars? Correct. I won, I won. What did I win? Nothing. Say, what kind of game show is this? This isn't a game show. Well, I'll say it isn't. Nobody wins anything. You'll be lucky to be on the air for one week. And welcome, everybody, once again to the Animaniacast. This is the podcast that is dedicated to the animated television series, Animaniacs, as well as other shows in the Rugerverse, such as Pinky and the Brain, Tiny Toon Adventures, and Freakazoid. Today, we are talking about, well, a bunch of things, but let's get to our introductions. I am Joey, and joining me once again is my brother, Nathan. 200 shows later, and I'm still a knockout. <laughs> Across the country in Georgia, it's Kelly. Hello. <laughs> yes, it's the 200th episode of our podcast. Yay! Woo! The crowd Woo! goes wild. Woo! I would not have thought this show would have been 200 episodes when we first started. <laughs> Me like maybe, maybe make it to 10. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Start with 10. And then, After that first episode, I was like, we're not making it. <laughs> exactly. Ironically, one of our most listened episodes is our first. And I, I, it's probably one of our weakest. But, you know, some people stick around past that. Which, if you're one of those people, thank you. There's actually a lot of... Uh, a lot of folks who have been listening to our show for all these four and a half ish years, which is kind of insane. Uh, I know when we started this show, it was just something kind of silly where I was like just talking with Nathan, like, hey, I want to start a, a podcast. And uh, I said, well, how about like Animaniacs is about to come on Netflix again. And so I liked listening to like Clone Wars commentary series where they kind of talked about episodes of the Clone Wars. So I was like, we'll talk about Animaniacs and we can call it the Animani cast because that's a funny name and mm-hmm. it sounds like Animaniacs. So Nathan, you want to do it? Nathan was like, meh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess. No, oh, yeah. So, so he said, sure. Yeah, okay. What do I have so, to do? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like... So, and, and then we asked one of our other brothers, we want to do it too? And he said, no. So we're like, well, to heck with you. So I found someone even better. So I, I thought on, I said, well, you know, there is this other, there's this girl that I follow on Twitter. I'm friends with her on Facebook. And she talks about Spielberg and she talks about Animaniacs like all the time. Like she talks about it just, just naturally. So I wonder if she'd be interested. So I, I, I messaged Kelly and I said, hey, you know, I'm, I'm Joey, and think about starting this Animaniacs podcast. Would you be interested in doing it? And Kelly, do you remember what you said? Um, no. <laughs> I mean, you other said, than yes. <laughs> yes. She, she didn't say no. <laughs> I think her exact typing words were, yes, exclamation marks. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah, I think I have the text. So it was... <laughs> So with that, uh, we got started, and boy, oh boy, it's been a great journey. I mean, we've met a lot of great people um, over the the years, a lot, have a lot of fantastic listeners, and uh, we've been able to really go much further in this show than I ever thought possible. Uh, we've gotten great support from uh, Joe Tavano and uh, over at RetroZap and the rest of the fantastic folks over there when we joined the network, and... It's it's just been a great journey, and of course, we've also met some fantastic people like, oh, I don't know, the creator of Animaniacs, <laughs> Tom Ruger, of course, has been on our show many times, and we've been lucky enough to have many of the writers and 
the directors, uh, and uh, even the voice actors of the show as well. So a lot of a lot of cool stuff over the past few years. Before we get to our special segment, I should say, of today's episode, uh, I was wondering, Nathan and Kelly, do you have any special just kind of memories, things like that, that you recall from over the past 200-so episodes? Oh, man. There's so many. Um, Harrison Ford coming into the, our <laughs> podcast. <laughs> um and of course, talking to the, all the Good Feathers, the Good Feather reunion has to be a, a huge highlight. Recorded in Tom Ruger's house, even yes, meeting the the triple threats. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was something else. Uh, Kelly, what about you? Oh yeah, I mean, there's been tons of stuff. I mean, of course, I'm I didn't get to personally join y'all for the Good Feathers reunion, so that. Would have been a major highlight, and it was still fun to be involved. Um, but uh, I, I really enjoyed talking to Randy Rogel. That was a lot of fun, and and of course Tom. Tom's always a joy to uh, to chat with, and um, uh, and then you know I was so excited when we got Rob Paulson to join, but then I my phone was stupid and I couldn't join with the audio i could see things but i couldn't hear or talk so i was like okay well that was you know whatever see, but see, um it seems like all the times that like all these like really cool moments and then there's always these technical difficulties that keep uh, yeah. kelly out of the way well sometimes. i was trying to do it on my lunch break at work because that was the oh, time that's that worked right. for him, and, and it's like <laughs> i don't i don't have my setup right now so um so there's been some not so great times cause, you know <laughs> tech tech stuff but nothing you know, all of our guests have been great and, and fun. And, and I just like talking about Animaniacs. I mean, I like like you said, I'm just a big fan. And uh, I, I've been quoting the show since I saw it. So, yeah, I do work it in a normal conversation. Most of the time, people don't even know what I'm referencing. Exactly. They don't even know it is a reference sometimes. <laughs> but, you know. Well, yeah, it's been it's been really, I mean, just, uh, gosh, the who I, I talk about all the time. But who would have thought, like, when we're watching these episodes of Animaniacs, that when you see those names in the credits, that oh yeah, I've I've met that, I've met that person, I've talked with them, they know me, they you know like it's kind of insane and it's really insanity the world that we live in. Not, you know, not not only just social media outreach, people can talk to creators very easily these days, but especially with this podcast, being able to to know these people and uh, become friends with them has barely been a treat. And I got to say, it's also been really fantastic talking with you two over the past few years because, I mean, I talk with you two more than <laughs> most of my friends. <laughs> yeah, during Once core we... team, we have like our weekly meeting, which yeah, is really exactly. nice. Yeah. Like, I have this to look forward to. Exactly. Um, I want to mention that our Animaniacs Live, when we all got to see each other in person, that was yeah. when we didn't have the technical difficulties. And yeah, we all was... got to do something. That yeah. was fun. Yeah, we were able to get that done, uh, and and that was fantastic. That was just uh, what twenty nineteen, right? Yeah, a but it seems time. like a lot longer ago. I know. <laughs> yeah, it was a simpler time. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, today uh, we have a special treat for everybody. Um, we are starting a brand new series of podcast episodes, ladies and gentlemen. We are starting. A Patreon. What? Yeah, we, that's just we like that's like other podcasts. <laughs> yeah, I know other podcasts do them like oh I don't know within two weeks of doing <laughs> starting their podcast sometimes, and we're like well we'll do we'll play the long game. Um, so yes, uh, we are going to be starting a Patreon. It's going to be launching in just uh just a couple days, I would say, from the time of the release of this episode, and. It's going to have a, a bunch of different great levels that you can, uh, you know, contribute to if you see fit. Um, all this this show will continue to be free for everybody. Nice. Our, our normal, our normal episode discussions and reviews and everything. And you know, right now, all of our previous episodes and everything are still going to be available and, and stuff like that. So we're not going to be at this point, we're not taking it down and hiding them behind a paywall. <laughs> exactly. So Ooh. you'll still be able to do that. <laughs> but if you are so inclined, there are a lot of different levels that we're setting up and a lot of different incentives for you to, uh, if you might be interested in, 
Uh, we have the standard, you know, here's a dollar. Uh, thanks, thanks for doing a podcast. What do I get for the dollar? <laughs> you get extreme gratitude from us. Yeah, uh, he, mental. There yes, you go. You can mental, feel yeah. psychic vibes. <laughs> <laughs> but for the other uh, the other tiers, we're going to have things like exclusive Facebook groups. We're going to have uh, things like, oh, I don't know, exclusive creators commentary tracks what? from Tom Ruger. That's right. Uh, one of the main things that we're really excited about is that today we're going to be uh, showing you or playing for you uh, one of the commentary tracks, the first one, I should say, that we've recorded. We've recorded a few more, and they're all set to go in the next few weeks. You're going to get a chance to watch Animaniacs, the first episode of the classic series, uh, along with the creator uh, of the series, Tom Ruger. And Tom's really fantastic. He gives so many great insights uh, and observations to not only the animation process, but just to the references that a lot of people... There were, he, there were still references in this yeah. first one that he was giving out, like, oh, I had no idea that was a reference to this or that. So, And we've talked about this, like, first episode multiple times. Yeah, exactly. Like, and with Tom Ruger, and we're still like, oh, really? <laughs> like, oh, like, really? Wow. I didn't know that. Okay, cool. <laughs> so it, it's a great... It's a. It was really fun recording these, and... Uh, I can't wait to really share them with everybody. So those are going to be exclusive to our Patreon feed. This first one's going to be – this first taste is for free. You know, it's always the Ooh, first one. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, of course, you know, the other things you'll be able to get on our Patreon. Uh, little, you know, video chats and even, like, things like decals and stuff like that that, uh, you know, I handmade them and stuff. So those are the, of the fun. Warners and Pinky and the Brain and things. Yeah, just any, you know, what? hey, I design them, cut them and make them. So, you know, I'm open to suggestions, too, of like, I suppose, of other characters from the show. So this is going to be a, a, a new journey for us. And like I said, if you're not interested, don't worry. You know, you'll still be able to listen to our normal show like like always. This is just a way for us to cover some of the podcast service uh, hosting fees, uh, some of the you know online fees such as Zoom, stuff like that. We're not going to be making any money off of this. I don't think any of us have any of that expectation. So we're just looking, we're just actually just looking for a way to just, you know, improve our show, if anything, just help with better equipment and, and just make sure that we can keep the lights on <laughs> for this show as long as possible. Because believe it or not, which I had no idea this was true when I started podcasting, you actually have to pay to do this stuff, which is so so funny. It's like I thought it was just free. I thought you just give it to iTunes and they put it up yeah. for free. What? We're nope. doing all the work of recording this thing. We have to <laughs> edit it and pay to put it even on the air. Like, oh come on. How dare you? <laughs> We really do appreciate any support that you're able to give if you are. The link is patreon.com slash animaniacast, and you can check that out and uh, check out the different levels. And if you're interested, uh, consider becoming a patron, and we appreciate your support. Hey, this is Tom Ruger, and you're listening to the Animaniacast. All right. It is time, ladies and gentlemen, for our we're going to call them, I guess, the Creator's Commentary Series uh, of the Animani cast. And we are here, of course. It's me, Joey. And we got Nathan. And we got Kelly. Oh, I was supposed to say something. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking you could say hi. <laughs> I was just did. like, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, you're here. You're like, what's up? <laughs> Forget that we're, we're doing audio, Nathan. So we got Nathan. 
I'm Nathan. <laughs> <I'm> Kelly. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> and we've got, of course, the creator of Animaniacs. It's our good friend, Tom Ruger. Hey, gang. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, we are going to be going through all the episodes of Animaniacs. Of course, we got to start here with episode one of the series. And let's just go over the quick stats of this right here. So this is going to be featuring the segments Desanitized, which was directed by Rusty Mills and Dave Marshall and was written by Paul Rugg. We have The Monkey Song, which was directed by Gary Hartle and Rich Ahrens and, of course, was uh, a parody written by Tom Ruger. And then we have Nighty Night Tune, which was directed by Rusty Mills and it was written by Nicholas Hollander. And uh I think... We're going to, this is our first commentary. We'll see how it goes. It's going to go hope, great. It's going to go fantastically. <laughs> but Nathan, why don't you tell us for those, for those people at home, how whether you're watching it this? on Hulu. Yeah. Whether it's okay. Hulu or DVD. Now we're watching the DVD version. So there's always a slight possibility that it might be slightly different, uh, timing wise. Yeah. And, and when you and watch streaming. the credits, you'll need to make sure you click the button that says watch the credits, you know, cause they're, they're going to cut off the little tag at the end cause it's Hulu. And <laughs> yeah. So we're watching the DVD version, the best version, of course, there is right now. Yeah. But you know, if you don't have the DVD, uh, definitely hit that streaming platform. But Nathan, tell us, how are we going to make sure that everyone is synced up exactly to the same point as us? All right. So. Go ahead and start playing your episode. And as soon as Bugs Bunny standing in front of the Warner Brothers logo disappears, so as soon as it fades to black, press pause. And in a moment, Joey will tell you to unpause the video. There we go. All right. And so when I when I go one, two, three, go. When you hear go, oh, unpause. Not yet, though. No, not not. See, that was that was, that was deceptive. That was a test. Wait okay, for him to go. do that the second time. <laughs> here we one. Two, three, go. All right. Here's the very first episode. Newsreel of the stars with all those celebrities. And here we will meet the Warners for the first time. That's Tex Avery sitting at the desk. Hello, nurse is looking over his shoulder. That's Tex Avery. She's so old. I mean, they're at the inception. <laughs> and of course, Tex Avery was the one that came up with "What's up, Doc?" So them saying "Hello, Nurse" to Tex makes makes a lot of sense. <laughs> the newsreel, of the stars thing at the beginning was uh, the the split screen thing was taken from an old Abbott and Costello TV series where they did a split screen opening. Mm. And also, this voice is very much like the narrator's voice in Citizen Kane. So Frank Welker is doing doing that sound here. And, and here's here we have the theme. The, yeah, here's the main title. Directed, drawn, storyboarded by Rich Ahrens. Uh, Richard Stone did the music. I wrote the lyrics. And uh, yeah, th this song really holds up beautifully. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Just like a there's, perfect way to introduce all the characters. And there's a little squish coming up. Watch squish. And what I noticed uh, about that just recently, uh, <laughs> when they get squished like that, I, I I never noticed. You can hear even a sound effect of a splat at that very second if you really listen to it. Yeah. And I, I mean, how many times have I seen this theme song? And I just noticed that literally, like. Four weeks ago, or something. Well, I like always that. hear the squish. I love the squish, and I noticed <laughs> it's it's not in the uh, the new the reboot. The, the, no. They mm. missed the they, squish. They missed that squish sound effect. <laughs> There's also a tiny little eye blink coming up in one of these episodes where TMS has added a little flash of light during the wink. It's a, it's amazing. Oh wow! Hmm. So here's Paul Rugg, Rusty Mills, uh, Dave Marshall. This is uh, the beginning of the Paul Rugg uh, genius of comedy. Uh, it's really beautiful. Yeah, I love that it starts with Dr. Scratch and Sniff instead of the Warner. Like, you know, it's all from his point of view and everything. Like, it's a really creative way. Yeah, I remember watching this for the first time as a kid thinking I, there was a big buildup to the Warners. And I was going, well, where are the Warners? And then, yeah. just, and then seeing like, okay, who's this guy? 
<laughs> so it was a great intro to what's what the setup of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we heard them sing, but we haven't really heard them talk yet. There's Bogart, his second appearance in this episode. He was in the, <laughs> the uh, newsreel. So this must be 1940s? This right would be here. 1943. If it was 50 years ago, it would be yeah. 1943. But I think this is today. Oh, yes. no, that's not today. I think today. it's still 1943, he's yeah. Got, he's got his hair on. Mm-hmm. And here's Ronald Reagan wanting to be a, a president. <laughs> a lot of classic celebs in this one. Uh, <laughs> Blonde chair. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I feel like some of these, his hair should have been white too. Like, but you get to see that, you know, Dr. Scratch and Sniff has gotten older now. Looks yeah, almost. But if like, he had gray hair in 1943, I mean, gosh. Yeah, he'd be mm. too old. Great. Yeah, he'd be really old. But uh, like he anyway. was with Batman, that would be like in the 80s or something, right? I mean, <laughs> sure. True. He's, he had still had. So within the last five years, his hair went gray. <laughs> Just like. <laughs> He just dyed his hair. Mm. Yeah, the first line from the Warners uh, from Dot, did you miss me? (laughs) So now he has the gray hair. So he had the orange hair before. I got you. Yeah. Yakko's ears are so floppy right there when he's wagging his head around. Oh, this is Cuckoo's Nest. Uh, they knew how to draw these guys so cute. Their eyelids are cute. Their eyebrows are cute. Uh, when we saw this, I remember watching this cartoon on the Moviola when it came in. We had Moviolas back then. And we were all just in love with how cute they looked. Speaking of cute. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Heloise Nurse, right? Yeah, Heloise. Uh, <laughs> and then Dot gets the booby prize. <laughs> I love how they float through, yeah. <laughs> Scratch and Sniff's office is called the Shrink. You know? Yeah, <laughs> he's going to the Shrink. He's been there for forty years, and <laughs> people just give him that title. Fifty years, yeah. So Plotz is not only the president of the company, but he's also the chairman of the board. Oh, <laughs> and I love how Rug sneaks in a dig at. Uh, don't tell mom the babysitter's dead here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rug like, it, yeah. He's gotten a cult following, I think, over the years, but yeah. It's Rug likes to throw in a little dig now and then. I don't think Plotz has ever been this short in any other cartoon. He's really a little ball right there. About the size of his head, yeah. 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 <laughs> and here come the Warners. They're not they're not they're not completely out of control regarding Hello Nurse yet, so that's yeah. that's good. Yeah. Just get to accompany her with some drums. <laughs> they, and she told them to follow and that's what they did. So it's fine. So. Yeah. <laughs> I do like the squishing going on in this next shot. Dot. Yeah. <laughs> so gross. Squish, squish. <laughs> and then the window shade is great. Perfect. <laughs> so that's, he takes umbrage at him calling him scratchy. <laughs> The most offensive thing. <laughs> yes. That, that's, they're just getting started. The wordplay <laughs> is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, the 
<laughs> the hammer pants right here. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit 90s. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is very 90s, yeah. I love the n nodding no and the nodding yeah, no. Yeah, <laughs> <It's> yeah. Like, <laughs> no more jokes, yeah? I yes. like the, the comedy lesson here. Yeah. Cute little flowers. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. They're experts of comedy. It's like where he transforms himself into a cartoon, <laughs> <Yes>. basically. <laughs> there's 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 loose rules for even the humans on the show. They can well, that, they can do a little bit of well. That's changing. the theme of this particular half hour. It's mo a monkey theme. There are a lot yeah. of monkey references. A pea psychiatrist, yes. <laughs> And this is adorable and cute that they would go to the trouble of doing all this. I mean, the amount of work put into these cartoons is just tremendous. Just the, just the modeling, all the, all the different designs. And I love Mr. Puppethead. Yeah. Yes. They really should have made merchandise of Mr. Puppethead, I think. Definitely. Uh, Every kid should have his own puppet psychiatrist available. <laughs> and that's why I call it a pea psychiatrist. That's right. <laughs> I love how they blink at Mr. Puppethead. Like, you know, it's like they're, they're dumbfounded by him. <laughs> this conversation is fantastic. You know? <laughs> I, just the way mine was yummy as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and there goes some of the hair. First of it, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Puffin ate his hair. Yeah, this is such a great idea. Just like, let's meet each character. You see them all three, and then just the 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 construct of the episode is just so good. You're going to show all three, show them going crazy, and now we're going to meet each personality individually, which is just mm -hmm. so cool. And the structure of each of the segments uh, with each character is really good, too, because it's it's basically a bunch of great verbal material, but then it, there's a usually a, a visual big visual punchline at the end. So it's the physical, the verbal, then the physical, verbal, then physical. Uh, it's, it's really one of the gems of the episodes. Yeah. It made it, made it worth watching multiple times because of that. Cause you just, I kept, I would always find additional things as a kid jokes. I missed. Now let's, now, this is Wacko, right? I love yes. his voice here. Yeah. And it's Ringo. He's doing Ringo here. And Jess, on occasion, I'll see him in an interview where I'll say he's doing John. But he's not. This is, this is a beautiful Ringo impression. Um, mm. I love how he says, I feel fine. So yeah. beautiful. I yeah. feel fine. Just this whole. Uh, <laughs> the, the putting it on your head. <laughs> putting his hair back head. on. <laughs> just, okay, just. That's what you're touching, not what how you're do you feeling. feeling? <laughs> he like, wasn't even touching his nose until he started. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <sighs> and now we get the the visual gag yeah the verbal then the visual and then wacko gets two pulls of the hair i think right of he's the only warner that gets ducks scratches him to pull twice <laughs> we're measuring how frustrating each one yeah. is dot is the least frustrating wow. oh, oh, that's, look at that. wow. that's, that's a Ouch. major Major section of hair. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Great wordplay. 
Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> Yakko knows the thesaurus. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I wonder if that was just like easy to write for because he just like. <laughs> <laughs> and that's we're done there with the we hair. Go. No more hair for him. <laughs> and now the kids realize, oh, that voice we heard at the beginning, it was Yakko <laughs> all along. <laughs> And I didn't know he 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 could see uh, the clown. I think up on Mars someday because yes. the yeah. clown goes up there. The clown goes up there too. <laughs> like uh, it's, Rob Paulson could do two different psychiatrist voices. So it's I heard the <laughs> monkey, <laughs> the monkey song. Uh, nowadays they like animation scripts to be like a page per minute. Well, this is a four minute cartoon, and I have the script here for it. It's. 14 pages long. Oh my gosh. So I, I, I contend that for a, an animated script to have all the detail that was in this one, uh, you need to have a bunch of pages. So this really, since I wanted to d- describe the entire cast and have them all involved, I, I, and this was one of the very first things written for the show, I wanted to make sure it had all the details it needed. This song... Uh, of course, it's a Calypso number made famous by Harry Belafonte, written by Norman Spahn and Irving Bergey. And uh, so some of the lyrics are from them, and a lot of the lyrics have, I've adjusted to make room for the Warners. I, I love when um, Scratch and Stiff like, puts his hands on his face and looks right at the, audi- looks right at the camera, and it looks like Edward Monk's uh, scream. They're like, actually... There actually is a frame of uh, Scratchy as the scream in that oh. <laughs> one one frame. It's exactly from Munk. <laughs> I love that painting. I do too. And. Probably the best performance by the hippos. Yes, I was going to say those hippos are so so much energy and having fun. <laughs> <laughs> and there's probably the first adult joke of the series. Yeah. I don't I don't <laughs> know what the monkeys won't do for a nickel. I'll give you a clue. That you know that infers something. I think. <laughs> we, and we find out that Doctor Scratch and Simp has blue eyes. This is yes, yeah. canon. <laughs> And I love that I can barely see it, but Slappy is the one that chopped down that tree. She has an axe in her hand. There's just so much stuff going on right here. And it's really a great intro to all these characters. Because, again, I just can remember as a kid, we watched this first episode a lot. And Mm -hmm. my memories of this first one are so so vivid because I had such anticipation of it that I was just going, who are these characters? Who are these people? You know, and... Uh, so fun to see little little bits of their character hinted at. Mm-hmm. Well, Scratchy never had a bigger, better episode than this one. That's for sure. Oh yeah, and that's one of the things that I I really think like in the in this in that reboot that first episode didn't show Scratchy, and I'm like, for them to ha- have such great chemistry with him to just totally be left out was uh, it's just so sad. Mm-hmm. So because this is just this is the way you do it. I think. well, does he show up in the the reboot at all? He does yeah, the very last episode. episode. He has actual lines. Uh, He's, uh, I think he shows up before then, but like only as background. <laughs> Quasimodo, right? I there. know. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I love the good feathers in this too. Just the, yeah. The... Squit and uh, yeah, and pesto. No, yeah, squit and pesto. Yep. And the brain and pinky. They actually do speak in the next cartoon. We get a few more dialogue lines from different characters coming up mm-hmm. in the next cartoon. <laughs> Although it does have the funniest line, I think, from the hip hippos too, which is just, oh, play that thing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> but that is from the original version of the, the original, song. Which play that thing. We had no idea that th- we yeah, knew this we song so this. well. 
but we had no idea Harry Belafonte even did a song like this. And of and, course, this was the this was the cartoon that we didn't get the rights to. We didn't get the rights to the song until like the Friday before we aired this. <laughs> so there was some very frantic negotiation to line up uh, the rights. <laughs> <laughs> And here we have Nick Hollander, Rusty Mills, Nighty Night Tune. This is by Freelance Graphics, uh, uh, New Zealand. Uh, and it's one of the funkier looking cartoons. Uh, the characters don't look on model that often. But I like that this takes place inside the water tower. So apparently there's a pretty nice guest room inside the water tower where every member of the cast can uh, like hang out if they want. <laughs> it's a TARDIS. It's bigger on the inside. and Yes. <laughs> There's Runt having his first line, Frank Welker. And there's Maurice doing the brain. And of course, this is Jim Cummings doing his Sterling Holloway impression, a.k.a. Winnie the Pooh impression. Yes. <laughs> mm. Now, she she was named Hello Nurse by this time, right? Like... Or was that a later? <laughs> well, hello, nurse. I mean, every time the kids saw her, uh, yeah, hello, nurse. So, hello, Louise. Hello. And <laughs> yeah. I mean, Scratchy just calls her nurse. That's true. But you can call someone by the nurse. last name. Sure. Scratch and Sniff is how his about, last name. How about Skullhead showing up in episode <laughs> one? I'm impressed. Yeah. The stars in the background just look a little like little elements of that kind of bothered me like how just flat I think that, it looked i think that's from the book is that from uh maybe yeah I maybe think so. that's a stylistic choice of the book okay yeah. i like them now yeah yeah <laughs> in that case if it's from the book i'm cool with it <laughs> I know that they they have a log flume in the water tower yes yes they do and they actually uh sold a, a big painting from animaniacs at the stores that included the log flume oh yes wow. yeah. i think uh I think we got a little card of that signed. I think yeah. Nathan, Nathan, I'll have to give it to you. I think your name's on it. <laughs> there was yeah. Pinky's first line of the series just now. That rhymed. <laughs> yeah. I love the cussing, the cursing that he does, the yeah. fettuccine, fettuccine Alfredo. Alfredo. Oh. And <laughs> <laughs> that is a particularly creepy part of Mr. Skull. Yeah. Right yeah. What is he doing there? <laughs> It's so funny. Freelance has has some moments of of some. It's great animation, and then they miss the mark sometimes. Yeah, we didn't send a lot to them ultimately. Now, they, did, is... <laughs> they did do uh, uh, Survey Ladies later on, which is a pretty funny episode. Yeah, that's a great one. Why does Wacko wear underwear if he doesn't wear pants? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a very good question. That's was... that's, that's like an error. <laughs> Put on them. please please get a lot <laughs> yeah that was yes. not mentioned mm. and uh yeah so hopefully everyone stays to the very end to see the little gag at the end <laughs> i like dot's expression there just... yeah she's like fed up with them <laughs> <laughs> well that was episode one that was so much fun that was fantastic That was so much fun doing that. I it would was... pay four dollars at least for that. Wow. That was just for that one episode. And there's I I would I even if there wasn't any more, are there more of these? There are more. There are more, <laughs> and there's more and more and more to come. So once again, if you're interested in any of that uh, additional commentary tracks, you can go over to patreon.com slash animaniacast. And uh well, let's go ahead and get to some contact information. Uh, Nathan, where can people reach you online? Joey, I'm on Twitter, JangoFT, that's me. All right, and Kelly, what about you? I'm also on Twitter, Yoda Princess, Y-O-D-A-P-R-N-C-S-S, or email me at Kelly, eh, email me, Kelly at BigShinyRobot.com. All right, and as for the Animaniacast, we are on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. You can send us an email by sending us an email at Animaniacast at RetroZap.com and Speaking of RetroZap, you know, we're a proud member of the RetroZap podcast community. And hey, why not head on over to our Discord group where you can talk to us and other members of the RetroZap 
podcast uh, network. Uh, you can get a welcome link by going to discord.animaniacast.com. That'll take you right on over there. You can talk about Animaniacs or, quite frankly, anything else, pop culture. There's brand new sections that Joe just opened up that, dealing with video games and comic books and just fantastic stuff. So it's really popping, and it's a great place to talk about pop culture in a positive place. So join us. Well, that'll do it for today's episode. So for Nathan and Kelly, this is Joey saying good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. This podcast is not endorsed by Warner Brothers or Amblin Entertainment and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Animaniacs, Tiny Toon Adventures, Freakazoid, the Warner Brothers logo, all names, pictures, and sounds are registered trademarks and or copyrights of their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of the Animaniacast unless otherwise indicated. Nighty night people everywhere. And nighty-night wackos underwear.